Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense, joined by Macho Man Randy Savage and Ric Flair, of course. Today I'm coming at you guys with seven relaxing fragrances, or fragrances that make me feel relaxed, put me in a better mood when I wear them. A lot of these fragrances may not be what you think of when you think of relaxing fragrances. For a lot of people, it's stuff like Gucci Pour Homme too. It's got that nice tea note in there, very calming. But these are fragrances that I just enjoy smelling and enjoy wearing. So for me, I mean, that's relaxing. A lot of people have been doing these kind of videos. I think, is it four relaxing fragrances, five relaxing fragrances, something like that. It's been making the rounds as a tag video. I decided just to do this as sort of a weekly rotation while I'm sitting here and isolation basically. So we've got seven fragrances to talk about, technically eight. Like always, I'm kind of just throwing an extra one in there for funsies. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Talk about some relaxing fragrances. As I mentioned guys, some of these fragrances may not be what you think of as relaxing and really they weren't necessarily what jumped to my mind initially when I was thinking of doing relaxing fragrances, but then I thought, well, these fragrances make me happy, so I guess that's relaxing. The first one is this one, Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum. Dolce & Gabbana The One is one of my favorite fragrances, the one Eau de Toilette and the one Eau de Parfum, and they have been for a very long time. I know that they're kind of played out at this point. Lots of guys out there who aren't even really into fragrances that just have like two or three fragrances own the one, either this one or the Eau de Toilette. So I do get that, that it's all over the place and that you're gonna smell it everywhere but I just love the way it smells. Amber, tobacco, ginger, cardamom, grapefruit, some of the notes in here. It's sweet, it's rich, it's a little bit dense. Obviously, the big knock on the one Eau de Toilette and to a lesser extent, the one Eau de Parfum is the performance. It's not great, no, it's not really loud. It doesn't fill up a room, doesn't project like a monster. It doesn't last for 12 hours, but it smells good. And the original, the one Eau de Toilette, First time I smelled it, fell in love with it right away. So yeah, I've got lots of niche fragrances, lots of indie fragrances, but I still love the way the one smells. And this one made the cut. Really well known for being a date night fragrance, big compliment pulling kind of fragrance. The type of fragrance that makes people gravitate in toward you a little bit more. You know, it's got that magnetic kind of uh, vibe about it. The one Eau de Parfum for me, Relaxing. Next up, a newer fragrance from Isi Miyake. It's this one, Low DC Pour Homme, Wood and Wood. Yeah, Wood and Wood. Not really the greatest flanker name that I've ever seen, but I'll give it a pass. This one is a little hit or miss, it seems like. Some people really enjoy this fragrance. Other people think boring, crappy, played out. For me, I think it's really pleasant. It's got apricot in here along with woody notes, which is not too much of a surprise there. Vetiver and cedar and a few other woody type notes in here along with ambroxan. There's also grapefruit, which is gonna give you a little more citrus sweetness in here off the top, that freshness. The apricot does come through a little bit more for me than the grapefruit does. And the ambroxan is noticeable in here as the fragrance dries down, really noticeable all the way around, actually. And that's where a lot of people are gonna dislike that fragrance because it is very much a modern, fresh men's fragrance. You've got modern woods, it's got that fuzziness to it, that, that pop, that effervescence, with a little bit of fruity sweetness in here, again, from the apricot and the grapefruit. Very easy to wear fragrance, one that a lot of people are going to enjoy. Uh, springtime, summertime type scent, much in the vein of the original low DC from Isimiyaki. And by much in the vein of the original, I mean in terms of when you would wear it, not in terms of how it smells necessarily. And this is a fragrance that my friend Cam at Carolina Fragrance Reviews also likes a lot. I brought this along with me when I met up with him in Asheville, North Carolina back, uh, I think it was a couple months ago at this point. And he checked this one out and really liked it right away. Just said, you know, fresh, easy to wear, uplifting. And that's what this is. So for me, it's a little bit relaxing. Maybe more lively 
than you would expect from a relaxing fragrance because it does have kind of a pop to it, uh, zingy freshness, but really nice to wear and really nice to smell. Next up is a fragrance that I have loved for years and years and years, and this one is very divisive uh, for different reasons than the last one. The last one, people will say, oh, too modern, boring, whatever. This one is divisive because some people just cannot stand the opening. And it's this fragrance, Versace the Dreamer. And I absolutely love the bottle. I think this bottle is awesome. I have a vintage bottle of the Dreamer and a newer bottle of the Dreamer. There's not an enormous difference between the two. A Little bit of a difference, sure. Enough of a difference to get worked up about. Nah, it has tobacco, lavender, sage, and carnation as some of the notes in here. And this one, like I said, the opening. Some people do not like, some people cannot stand the opening here. They say it's too abrasive, too in your face, whatever. I actually really like the opening. The opening to The Dreamer is probably my favorite part of the fragrance. And one thing that I love about The Dreamer, it's very different from anything else nowadays that's on the market. This is its own fragrance. Nowadays, it seems like 80%, and that could be an exaggeration, but it seems like 80% of new releases are kind of riding the coattails of something that came directly before it, right? So you have all these blue fragrances where they have a little bit of Invictus or a little bit of Sauvage or a little bit of uh, Dylan Blue, a little bit of Blue de Chanel, whatever, in there and it's like a little play on these fragrances that are very popular from the last few years. Even things like Versace Eros, you know, you'll find bits of Versace Eros scattered throughout all kinds of new releases. When Versace the Dreamer came out, this was its own thing. Versace the Dreamer was not trying to be what came, you know, right before it. So this fragrance has a good amount of floral notes. Uh, it's got, like I said, tobacco in here, tonka as well as it dries down. It is a fantastic smelling fragrance and good performance as well, and a cheapie. For me, Versace the Dreamer is a fragrance that I would always want to have in my collection, and that one does put me in a better mood and chills me out. Next up is a fragrance that's discontinued. It's harder to find nowadays, and this is the bonus fragrance, if you want to call it that. Fragrance number eight, even though I'm featuring it fourth here, whatever. It is Cologne du 68 by Guerlain. Once upon a time, this was not discontinued, and <laughs> you could find this at discounters for like 30 bucks, and it was an absolute steal at that price. And this fragrance has a lot going on in terms of the notes. I don't know how well you can make that out, but check out all those notes in the fragrance. There are a lot of them. Cologne du 68. Iris, sage, linden blossom, uh, pedigrain, citruses, a bunch going on here. This one, very fresh, clean, and classy. Just smells absolutely amazing this time of year, spring, summer. This one, I can't tell you, you should go out and buy it at the prices it's going for because I looked on eBay before this video and it was, it was up there. It was like $150 per bottle, something like that. Back when you could get this for 30, 35 bucks, it was an absolute monstrous steal. Nowadays though, not really uh, worth the price unless you are a collector of discontinued fragrances or collector of uh, Guerlain fragrances. I just wanted to bring this one up briefly because it is so, so nice smelling. So again, clean, fresh, a little bit sweet, classy, sophisticated. Uh, not at all one of those bubblegummy, sweet, youthful kind of fragrances, but very versatile and really just anybody could wear it age range wise. So Cologne Du 68, great fragrance, awesome. Next up, an Yves Saint Laurent fragrance, and it's this one, Jazz. Now Jazz was re-released in uh, the same type of bottle as M7 Oud Absolu, which is gonna be your smaller square type bottles. Those are much more easily found than these older style bottles. And then there are bottles that are even older yet than these, which have a, a cool kind of black and white coloration to them. Got lavender, nutmeg, oak moss, tobacco, coriander. This is gonna be a classic gentleman kind of fragrance. Some people are gonna call this barbershoppy. It is not as barbershoppy as Rive Gauche, which is probably the most well-known barbershop fragrance that Yves Saint Laurent has ever done. But Jazz does have a little bit of that barbershop vibe to it, that clean, 
kind of gentlemanly vibe. Now, as this dries down, you're gonna get more of the oak moss, more of the tobacco that comes out. For some people, jazz is going to be a little too old school, a little too old smelling, especially for younger guys out there looking for a sweet club kind of fragrance. Jazz is not that. The fragrance is really, really nice in quality. Uh, one of the better Yves Saint Laurent fragrances that you can get out there. But again, you're gonna have to like those more classic masculine fragrances in order to like this one. If you're the type of guy that shies away from the more classic masculine kind of scents, I don't think you're gonna like this one all that much. Like I said earlier, if you buy this nowadays or look for it nowadays, you're probably gonna see it in the uh, 2.7 ounce bottle, the square bottle from the La Collection of uh, fragrances that YSL re-released, which also includes M7 Oud Absolu, like I said before. And they are very, very similar, this one and the re-release, I own both of them, but this one is the one I wanted to show here today. After that, let's go to a Tom Ford fragrance from the Private Blend collection, and it's this one, Plum Japonais. It is starting to heat up outside, and Plum Japonais is more of a fall and wintertime fragrance, but I really, really like this one and wanted to give it a little bit of wear. It's got cinnamon, amber, oud, saffron, and of course, plum as some of the notes in this fragrance. And the plum here is gonna give you that dark, thick kind of uh, fruity sweetness. Just a little bit of tartness in there as well. Very, very nice. Then you've also got some spicy sweetness in here from the cinnamon and the saffron. The oud in here, not really an animalic oud. It's not uh, a funky oud. It's not an aggressive oud, not an abrasive oud. It really just kind of all melds together and you get this sticky, sweet, dark, kind of uh, slightly spiced fragrance. Good amount of warmth in here, which the amber contributes to as well, along with a bit of that sweetness. Plum Japonais is one of the Tom Ford private blends that does get talked about a decent amount. It seems to get a lot of love. People will compare it to Andy Warhol Face Edition by Bond number no. nine. I had a decant of that years ago. I never did pick up a bottle, which is a mistake on my part. I thought about picking up a bottle back when they were more affordable, and I was like, well, I'll get it later, I'll get it later, I'll get it later. Mm, and then I just never got it. <laughs> now it's crazy expensive, so yeah, kind of screwed that up. I did wear Plum Japonais and Warhol Face Edition side by side, and I got a bunch of differences between the two. They both do feature Plum, of course, but they are not super, super similar. At least not close enough that owning this one makes it where you shouldn't own the other one or vice versa. Though nowadays, <laughs> you're gonna have an easier time finding this than Warhol Face Edition. As I said, this is better for uh, cooler weather than warm weather, but I'm staying inside a lot nowadays, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Decided to bust that one out because I just love that dark, rich, sweet plum mixing with oud, spices, and a bit of amber in there. A little bit of that resinous touch. Very well done. One of the better Tom Ford private blends. And we go from that to this. Creed Original Vetiver. Yeah, this one, very different than Plum Japonais. This is more a spring and summertime fragrance. And Original Vetiver does have quite a similarity to Mugler Cologne. It's just Mugler Cologne is way more affordable than Original Vetiver. That being said, if you spray Mugler Cologne and Original Vetiver side by side, you will see that the Creed is of a higher quality. Though, of course, as I just mentioned, it does come with a higher price tag, so you'd expect that. And it's funny that it is named Original Vetiver when it smells like something else out there, but yeah. It has ginger, orange, musk, bergamot, and of course, vetiver as some of the notes in the fragrance. This one, soapy, clean, fresh, and green. It's what it is. Out of all of these fragrances, this one may be the one that most people would agree is a relaxing fragrance because it is just smooth, like I said before, green, fresh, clean, soapy, easy to wear, puts you into a good frame of mind. That's original vetiver. Ah, I'm so relaxed. <clears throat> it does smell amazing though. It smells fantastic in my opinion. Uh, extremely easy to wear and a fragrance that you could crush in the office, that you could wear casually, that you could wear formally. You could wear this on a date. It has basically a use in almost every single situation because it really does just come across smelling like a high-end clean soapy scent. And that's gonna take me to the last fragrance on this list. It's one that I've talked about 
a couple of times on the channel. It is an independent fragrance, independent house. I bought this years and years ago. Still love the way that it smells, though I only bust it out for special occasions. And it's this Monsiage Aviation Club. It has tobacco, leather, coffee, metallic notes, and green notes. This fragrance has a little bit of a story behind it. So Monsiage came up with uh, a story to kind of describe what they were going for with this fragrance, how it smells, uh, the idea, the place that it's trying to convey. And you can actually read that full write-up on their website. I'm not going to read all of that here because I'd be reading you guys like six or seven paragraphs and I don't think you want to hear me do that. If we break it down just extremely simply, a Cliff's Notes version, Aviation Club is supposed to get across the smell of an aviation club. So worn leather sofas, uh, a little bit of tobacco smoke in the air, people playing uh, poker around these old wooden tables, uh, all of these things kind of combining together, wafting through the air. And it does smell a bit like that. It smells like you've stepped into a building, uh, a, a grand room where you have all of these different things going on. People drinking uh, whiskey, people drinking coffee, a little bit of that tobacco smoke, old wood, old leather, just all melding together. And I absolutely love love the way this fragrance smells. This one is 100% just a fragrance that I wear for myself. That is it. It's not really the type of fragrance that I smell and go, oh yeah, that's a compliment puller. You know, that's a, that's a versatile beast. That's a, a monster of projection. None of that. It's just a fragrance that I like to smell and it smells like a place in time. And I absolutely love that. So this one, Aviation Club, wrapping up this video. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Let me know in the comments below what some of the fragrances are that you've been wearing over the past week or two. As always, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all of your support. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Stay safe out there, guys.